In this Adobe Photoshop website design tutorial, you will need the following software packages. You will need Adobe Photoshop. In this tutorial, I'm going to be using version CS3. You will need a standard text editor, for example, Microsoft Notepad, and an internet browser of your choice. I recommend Mozilla Firefox. I will be teaching you the following in this tutorial. I will be teaching you how to design an effective website layout in Adobe Photoshop, how to split your Photoshop website design up and save it as a website document, and finally, how to alter the website document once it has been saved as an HTML format. So let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new folder. So go right click new folder. We're going to call this website, feel free to call this whatever you want. And we're going to place it in the center of the desktop. Now we're going to go ahead and open up Adobe Photoshop, in this case version CS3. Wait for the software package to load. And once it's uh, loaded, go to file, new, or press control N. And this box, this dialog box will open up. Select the width. Uh, the default width for a website document is between 800 and 1000. So we're going to go for 950. Um, change the height to uh, roughly 150. We're going to be creating the header of a website document. Um, make sure all these settings are all the same as mine on the screen. Background contents transparent. Once you're happy with these settings, go ahead and press OK. Now this large uh, rectangular document as layer one has now been created. We're going to add a background color. So choose a background color, press the background tool, go to this uh, color picker and select a color. Um, drag the mouse around, I'm happy with this blue. So go ahead and drop it in. So now we've got the background color sorted, we can add some text. So this is going to be the header text of our website. Click anywhere and start typing. So I'm going to be typing new website. Obviously you cannot see anything at the moment because the text colour I've got is exactly the same as the background colour. So go to the top and we're going to have a white text colour. Um, press OK once you're happy with the colour settings. Now obviously this is a bit small for a website header. So click on the down option and we're going to go 36. That's still a bit too small. 72. There we go. That's a, that's a good sized website. Um, and I'm going to change the title to Ed's Johnson. Um, there we go. Now I'm going to centrally align this text on the document, so you press Control A on the keyboard and the marching ants should appear around the outside of the whole document. Go to the arrow tool and at the top you should see these options for alignment. Click the middle one here and the middle one here. That centrally aligns it by the height and the width, so it's exactly in the centre of the whole image. To deselect the document you go to the selection tool and press anywhere outside of the image and the marching ants will disappear. Go back to the arrow tool and I'm going to shift this text up a bit so you can do this by pressing the arrow keys on your keyboard. So there we go, that's good. That leaves us enough room to leave text below it um, for our menu bar. Go to the text tool again and create a new layer of text. Um, obviously we want a smaller size for the menu bar. Uh, so we're going to have a home page. Feel free to put whatever you want splitting up the different links. I'm going to put three spaces. But you could put a dot, for example, uh, a full stop, or whatever, whatever you want. But as I said, I'm going to put three spaces. I'm going to do um, an about page, three spaces, videos, three spaces, oh, spell it right, uh, three spaces, subscri uh, subscribe, three spaces, and contact. Oh, contact. There we go. And uh, obviously, I want to centrally align this text as well, so I'm going to do the same thing. Go to the arrow tool, press Control A. Um, go to the top, make sure it's centrally aligned uh, in terms of width, not in terms of height though because we want it at roughly that uh, height. Um, and there we go. Now obviously this doesn't span across, the menu bar doesn't span across the width of the page. So you can double click on the T on the layers and we're going to centrally align this. Now it's shifted it across to the left. So we've got to realign this in the middle of our document, in the middle uh, width. And we're going to alter the text now. Uh, because we want the text to span across the document a bit more. So we're going to add three more spaces in between each of our, each part of the text. Um, actually, we're going to add another two, because it's still not a very good width between them, spanning across. Um, and there we go, that's spanning across the uh, banner a lot more. That's more effective for a menu bar, it's splitting them up 
better. Now obviously our header text and our background are fairly plain, so click on layer 1 and create layer 2, that will appear above layer 1. We're going to go to the, uh, oh, the brushes tool and we're going to add some brushes. What brushes are we going to have? Some swirls perhaps? No, we're going to have... We're going to have an ink splat. Um, pick any of them and start, and choose a colour obviously, and then start splattering ink across the whole page. Ooh. Now obviously this is a bit strong, so we're going to change the opacity to 10%. So there we go, it's blended into the background quite nicely, um, and we're going to add a few more ink splodges. Uh, just randomly click around the place until we're happy with our settings. Um, and if you want you can drag with the arrow tool, you can drag the uh, ink splats or whatever brush you've used around the page until you're happy. So there we go, now we've got our text for our banner. Double click on the layer and you can add loads of layer options, so drop shadow. But now because the background is a dark colour, we're going to add an outer glow and this will work really well. We're going to change the colour for the outer glow to white and the opacity we're going to crank to 100. And obviously it's making it a bit more difficult to read the text, so perhaps we're going to change our opacity to 50. There we go, that's added a really nice glow to our header text. Uh, we could add a gradient perhaps. If it's a dark background or we've got an outer glow, I recommend a light to a slightly darker but not too dark colour scheme. So for this I'm going to go with white to a light grey. Uh, that just adds a final touch to our document and makes it look really nice. You can play around with all, obviously all the layer styles, but once you're happy, press OK. Now it's time to start splitting up our, tech, uh, our page. So go to the uh, slice tool and um, select. We're going to select our um, our header. Uh, drag it across. We're going to make it the full width. There we go. Um, and obviously, and now uh, we we are going to slice up each of our menu bar links and make it a bit wider um, for each one. So we're going to select around each of the links separately. Obviously when you're making your menu bar for your website uh, feel free to make it a different, totally different um, text but just slice around each of the text things. Now we're going to go to File, Save for Web and Devices and this, uh, this new box should load up um, and it's giving us a pre preset. We've got JPEG which is good for a website and once you're happy with all these settings press save Go to the desktop, find the document that we created, where is it, there we go, website. Double click on it and obviously this folder is empty because we haven't added anything yet. So we're going to name this header. Uh, obviously feel free to name this whatever you want. We want to save HTML and images. We want to, uh, we want to leave these on default settings and all slices. Once you're happy, press save, it will save and then that box will close and you're back to Photoshop. We're going to minimise Photoshop now and we're going to go to our website folder. In it you should see a new folder called Images and an HTML document called Header. We're going to right click, open with and select your internet browser, Google Chrome or Firefox or Internet Explorer I'm going to use in this tutorial. Um, wait for your internet browser to load up, there we go, loaded. And um, Now we can see, we're going to maximise this, now we can see our uh, images. Our image has recreated itself as an HTML document. Obviously it's not in the centre, it would be. It would look a lot better if it was in the centre. So now what we're going to do, go back to our website folder, right click on the header, open with, and notepad, or your text editor, whatever it may be. Maximise your text editor, and obviously this doesn't make a lot of sense, but it will basically create a table with um, lots of different images. So find a table tag, after table add a space, and then type in align equals centre. Once, we're, once you've done that, press File, Save, go back to our internet browser and press Refresh. It has put the image in the centre, which makes it look a lot better now. It looks a lot uh, better, it looks a lot more professional as a design. Uh, go back to our HTML document. Now obviously we can't tell where to add links on our menu bar. So we go to our website folder, go into Images, and you should see all the images which have created um, the document, the image for the home page was header underscore three. So find that image and add before it a space href equals index.html or whatever your home page is called. So maybe it's maybe it's home.html. Um, whatever the case may be. Um, 
go to the end of the image and close the link. So we've now linked that uh, image. Um, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, go to the annotation and click a previous and easier tutorial. But anyway, now we've got a link, but it's automatically added a border because if you link an image, a border will automatically appear. So to get rid of this, we go back to our image tag. Um, after image img, press space border equals zero. Um, go to file, save, go to our website document and press refresh. And now our, uh, our page should link. So if we click on the home image, it's taken us to home.html.